thank you for being wonderful to us and thank you for your children that prayed this morning bless them lord enrich them lord reward them abundantly and thank you lord for the sacrifices they've made over the years lord to stand and to pray precious father we ask that your word this morning will be a blessing to us huge huge blessing and to encourage everyone online in yeshua jesus name we pray amen and amen hallelujah we give the lord praise and we thank him for being our father yesterday the lord helped us to um not really conclude but as much as time would have allowed the life of mary there's quite a lot brethren to learn from her the dealings of the lord with her how everything happened it's not just anything anyone will just flip through as a sunday school class not to even talk of being you know worshipped by those who don't really know what they are doing and brethren the world has been deceived over the years and it's all about the queen of heaven other than this wonderful young lady who with her own mouth said that the lord had regarded her low estate and has brought her up and all generations shall call her blessed and then the same person who was in humility and in meekness the lord the lord recognized favored her is one that the whole majority of people who are in religion are bowing to bowing to i'm sure if she's to come physically she's to she will tell the world what are you doing but we know it's not her they are worshiping they're worshiping the queen of heaven so pray brethren let's just learn from that today by the grace of elohim there's two three more other people the lord used as forerunners of our lord yeshua that he wants to talk to us about their lives briefly they were mentioned but in those brief passages we are just huge words that we can expand and expand it to books and books but for this morning may the lord help us to look at the life of joseph and the bible says in matthew chapter 1 verse 18 now the birth of jesus christ was in this wise when his mother mary was exposed to joseph before they came together she was found with child of the holy ghost then joseph her husband being a just man being a just man and not willing to make her a public examination uh, sorry a public example was minded to put her away privately there was something the bible said about joseph that had the privilege to be called the earthly father in court of yeshua to have the privilege that yeshua should be born in his house brethren there's a lot we learn from this man today verse 21 uh, verse 20 but while he thought on these things behold the angel of the lord appeared unto him in a dream saying joseph thou son of david fear not to take unto thy unto thee mary thy wife for she, that which is conceived in her is of the holy ghost amen let's look at the life of 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 joseph the bible said there that joseph very little then joseph her husband being a just man wow so this man also got part of the big large cake the big blessing being a just man so the lord also found him faithful that these great things should happen in his home in his home by the grace of elohim the bible called him just and we took our time the other time to look at what it means to be just this is a faithful man this is a kind man this is a man with a pure heart this is a man that you know is in you know those things in equity this is a man when the bible says one is just it then means that before you do you think of others 
This is a man that considers others, that put people in their own shoe. He's not someone who runs off to do his own thing. He's not just one someone who says, oh, I didn't know I did this. A just person is one of equity. A just person is one of righteousness. A just person is one of peace. A just person, you see, if he had not been a just man, brethren, it would, it would have been so difficult for Mary to have carried Yeshua. But the Lord who knows us very well, that's why when it comes to the will of God in marriage, make sure you pray. Make sure you know who the Lord is given to you. And for us who knew the will of God going, make sure you keep to it. Don't come halfway and you're turning left, right and center, turning over to green, to yellow, to black and to bringing confusion all over. You don't even know where to put your hands in. It's all surprises and new things every day. Brethren, look, the Bible says here that this man was a just man man may the lord help all of us to remain just in him he was just and the lord knows the attributes is given to him look he, for him it was okay it to him it was a privilege what do we say today some men when the lord you know called their uh, their wives you know to do things in the uh, for the lord they are so, um, what do you call it? They want to show forth and the authority. I am the this, I am the that. They want to suppress. They want to tell us as long as this house is concerned, this is the way it should be. Joseph wasn't that kind of person. Joseph wasn't that kind of pastor who will not allow women to exercise their, their um, the gift of the Lord in their lives. With all the things people go today, oh, women shouldn't preach in the church. Oh, women shouldn't do this. Oh, women should... Joseph would have been insecure. Joseph would have been, you know, he would have felt angry. He would have liked to, loved to show authority. He would have used that to make comments and to say things to Mary. But the Lord do not use churlish men in doing anything. People who are very cheap. But the Lord looked at Joseph. He's a strong man in the spirit. Hallelujah. A decent man in the spirit. He should be there for every one of us, both men and women. But most importantly, men. Will you allow your spouse, will you allow the sisters in the church to be, to be whom the Lord has called them? To exercise. Or do you want to load authority and authority, authority? I pray and I commend those men when you see their wives, the Lord called them in the min into ministry. They're supporting them on every way. They're okay. Joseph was okay. He was prepared to take the, sec the to take the second stage. He was prepared to be calm for him that the Lord should ever, ever remember me that this great thing should be done in my house. Is okay for me that I should be allowed to marry the lady that had Elohim himself. That's okay for me. May, may the Lord help all of us to be content with the gift, with the grace that the Lord has given to us and not seek to be what he had not. You know, a lot of people like prominence. A lot of people want to be the center page. They want to carry it all over. They, you know, they, they load it all on others. And then the humility is not there. If the Lord has given it to you, he has given it to you. If the Lord has not given it to you, he has not given it to you. There's no need rubbing it down. Joseph was a just man. A just man. The Bible says he has he, he, he has told you, O oh man, what is good and what the Lord required of thee to do justly and to love mercy and to worship the Lord, to live humbly with Elohim, in him. That's the scripture to all of us. So he did, he wasn't just an ordinary man that picked that was picked up from the street. He wasn't just an ordinary man that the Lord, what you see today is in ministry, is not proper. It's all about, oh, it's only about women. But look at this just man was happy, was okay to remain and to support Mary through the birth of Elohim. He was okay to do his own bit. He wasn't angry. 
He didn't want to show right. He didn't want to do anything. Brethren, the Bible said of him that he was a just man. Are you a just man? Are you able to sit down in the church and see the gifts of others manifest? Are you happy to give them space to be who the Lord has called them, especially the women in ministry? Are you happy to sit down and say, yes, praise the Lord, and then affirm them? affirm them the enemy has done wickedness to the church by making them think that women should not minister if half of the church if 90 percent of a church are women and 10 percent are men so what satan means is that 90 percent should keep quiet and not say anything and not propagate the gospel and not preach it Yet the pastor will be happy for this lady to go out, bring in her friends, bring in her neighbors, bring in people out there, but then to allow her to empower her to exercise her gift in the Lord, no way. Joseph was a just man. And the Lord knew that the attribute he had, that he will not mind, he will not be insecure, he will rather be grateful to the Lord. He's not going to use words of Mary. He's not going to keep her miserable. He's not going to tell her, oh, I'm the man of this house. Oh, I'm this. Oh, I'm that. No, he was calm, a just man, a man of peace, a man of joy, a man of humility. Brethren, humility will never take, it didn't take away his being who he should be. It didn't at all. If we look at the Bible, in the book of Luke, let's go back again in Luke chapter 2, where when it was time, the days came, it was hard that the angel, it was him that the angel appeared to and said to him, take your wife and then take her out. The angel said to, you know, take her out. Be not afraid. He says, I will take you, take her out to Egypt. Brethren, it's still him that the angel came to tell what to do to the family. It's still him that the Lord gave the grace to look after the young child. To look after the young child. He didn't say, I don't know where this came. Today's men will talk about it. Oh, every little thing they will make reference to it. They will go to the dredge and dig it out and says, but I have to. But brethren, look at this man. He was okay. He was nice. He was, he was just. I pray that the Lord, it's not just a man. It's also to us women. Are we able to be just so that the Lord can use us? Everyone. So the Lord is saying, look at the people I use. Only in two verses, huge things were said of Joseph because he's the one that should be able to take it. And the lesson we learn from him today is that the Bible says that when the Lord spoke to him, he didn't say, who are thou, Lord? Okay, I pray about it. I think about it. Oh, but the scripture said that. But the scripture did not say that. But that was that. No, he had the Lord. May the Lord give us the grace to hear him. May the Lord give us the grace to obey him. May the Lord give us, give us the grace to be humble before him. And may the Lord give us the grace to accept his blessings, which he has brought to us. It's a blessing. If it is husband and wife, whether it's the husband or the woman, both are being exalted. If it is in the church, if it is one that the Lord has used you to bring up, the Lord also wants you to be part of that blessing, is to affirm is to give them space to be what, who the Lord wants them to be. And he says, take Mary, thy wife, thy wife. Did he say, no, not my wife anymore. I don't know what's going on. Remember, he's a nice man, a man of faith. He believed the Lord also that Mary will not be stoned to death. He may not know what to explain. He may not know what to tell others. He may not know, but the Bible says he decided in himself to take her out privately, not to expose her in the public, not to talk to her anyhow, not, not to care. And it just came out. He was a just man, a man who is prudent, a man who is under who has self-control, a man who is compassionate, a man who is merciful, a man who considers others. He says, no, 
I don't care. I know the implication of this. They are going to stone this young lady. I know the implication of this. They are going to ask me and I'm not going to tell lies, but I'm going to do something. Oh, Lord, help me. Quietly, in the night, how many of us can do things quietly without, out of lack of self-control, blow out things in the public. Blow out things in the public. May the Lord give us the grace to get some level of restraint. It's a virtue. See, Joseph was restrained. Oh, he would have shouted out loud. He would have been offended. He would have said it out loud. But he was restrained. May the Lord give us restraint. Give us temperance in all things. He said, I'm going to do it privately. I'm going to cover her sin. My love will cover a multitude of sin. I'm going to restore her as the bible said it in galatians chapter 6 verse 1 we which are more spiritual restore such a one in spirit of meekness is not what you say out out there without considering who is standing there and who is not standing there it ought not to be so brethren mary and joseph said i'm going to consider it and i'm going to take her out privately may the lord help everyone listening to be temperate in all things in the name of yeshua amen did he get the blessing and of course brethren if the the blessing that no one living here on earth they have to have the privilege of yeshua being born in his own house that is it hallelujah for him it is enough may the lord help us to consider, to see what he has given to us and count it as being enough and enough for us, a just man. And let's learn virtue from this young man. Are you a man? Go and learn virtue from Joseph. Hallelujah. Are you a woman? Go and learn virtue from Joseph. And brethren, may the Lord help us. And that's just summary what we're going to talk about him today because there's still a lot to look at being just to look at how the lord considered him even in the secret place of his own life the lord considered him faithful for this to be done the one i can use that will not expose mary the one I can use that rather we support her. The one I can use that rather we speak grace into her life. May that be for us in the name of Yeshua. It's a big lesson. Anything we've picked up in life, our attitude, our things, our temperaments and our contentiousness and all those things. Let's lay it before the Lord and then leave it there. And may the Lord help every one of us to be like Joseph. Another two other people that the Lord used so mightily in those days, not really used, but they came into the same into the scene, sorry, was Anna and Simon. But let's look at the book of Luke, chapter 2, to look at these um two people. And from verse 1, and it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when um, Cyrenius was governor of Syria and all went to be taxed, everyone in his holy city. And then let's go very straight back into um, <clears throat> verse 12, verse 11. Sorry, verse 10. And the angel said unto them, um, fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born in this day <clears throat> in, in the city of David a Savior, which is, Jesus, which is Christ Jesus our Lord. But let's read again into verse 28. Verse 28 of the... And Verse 23, as it is written in the law of the Lord, every male that openeth the womb shall be called holy to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice according to that which is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of dotu does or two young pigeons. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. 
and the same man was just again another just may the lord help us to take our time to see what it means to be just brethren when you are just before the lord it's all for your own good your own good don't copy from others that people in the church are coming to church but they're not living the righteous life please don't worry ab about them christianity this race is all about us and not about anyone make up your mind to serve the lord with all your heart with all your mind with all your soul it's all it all will be accredited to you for your own benefit look at another man again the bible said of him he was a just man and devout man waiting for the consolation of israel and the holy ghost was upon him the Holy Ghost was upon him. This was before the Pentecost. Yes, people think, oh, the Holy Ghost is only at the Pentecost. Remember, it's three in one. He has been in existence before we were born. He's Yahweh. He's Elohim. He's Yeshua. He's been there. The Bible says even before the Pentecost, this man was so good. Even when Moses' law, when the law was still there, the Holy Ghost was upon this man. May the Holy Ghost be upon us. Teach us all things. Direct us all things. Show us all things. Help us in all things. When we are weak, we call him. The Bible says that he was waiting for the consolation of Israel. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came by the Spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him, after the custom of the law, he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now let us thy, thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word, for my eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people, Israel. And Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him. Now, brethren, let's look at this wonderful man. He says, I have waited and now my eyes have seen the Messiah. My eyes have seen. Brethren, the Bible said three things of this man. One, he was a just man. Two, he was waiting for the consolation of Israel. Three, he was filled with the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost was upon him. Number four, it was revealed that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord. Now, we've talked about he was just and devout. He was just giving himself, praying into righteousness, working up his salvation with fear and trembling as we all should be doing today. Looking back, looking diligently, lest any one of us fall, of the sh fall short of the grace of the Lord. Asking the Lord for long suffering. It doesn't matter what comes our way. We let go and we continue. Offenses will come, brethren, but we need to continue. Trials will come, but we need to continue. Things that to help make us look back, we continue. But one other a good thing he did was waiting upon the Lord. He waited. Waiting is not easy at all. It's not easy. It's easy to say, oh, <clears throat> let's wait upon the Lord. But what carries weight is faith. It is hope. It is long suffering. It is perseverance. It is grace. It is peace. It is what endurance, temperance, meekness. It's what we help our waiting. Waiting is not easy. People say, oh, wait upon the Lord until it kicks in. So will you know that waiting for 25 years to get an Isaac is not a small joke. Waiting for 430 years to be delivered from captivity and oppression is not an easy wait. But may the Lord give all of us grace to understand that a thousand years is like a day in the sight of the Lord. And a, a, a day is like a thousand years. When the Lord says, wait, please wait. Hebrews chapter 6 verse 11. The Bible says, for without faith, it is impossible to please the Lord. It takes faith to 
wait upon the Lord, hoping for that which you have not seen, but your heart is strong. You are not wavering. You are not considering what you're saying. Situations around you may not really look like it has happened. You may get discouraged and say, no, I didn't get it. You may see the mountains. Do not see the mountain. Have the faith and wait for you will see the salvation of the Lord. Amen. Brethren, the Bible says in Romans chapter 5, verse 5, that hope make it not ashamed. It doesn't make ashamed. When you're waiting for the Lord, others may not like it, but please, brethren, wait for the Lord. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 8, the Bible says, But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and have and love for an helmet of hope of salvation. This is what enables waiting to carry on to to stay this is what enables waiting to stand because your faith is sharp your hope is not deterred you are looking up to jesus the author and finisher of our faith titus chapter 2 verse 13 the bible says them looking for that blessed hope and then and then for the glory of the appearing of the great of our great god and our savior jesus christ you're looking simon was looking he was hoping he knew and he stood with what the lord said to him that his eyes shall not see death that is the hope romans chapter 15 verse 4 the bible says that all these things were written for us as an example brethren is written for you are you waiting the life of Simeon is, will encourage us today. Please do wait upon the Lord. For the vision is to an appointed time. It will not tarry. It will surely come to pass. Wait for it. Be patient. Stand still. You will see the salvation of the Lord. Do not be deterred. Do not lose hope. That is all about waiting. He waited. Sometimes waiting is so hard. Like Job. In the book of Job chapter 17. He couldn't. He was like, okay, then I know what is going on. Grave is now my home. You know, negative confession. It does happen to all of us, but the Lord is saying to us, no, don't go that way. Stand strong. It doesn't matter what that thing is. It continues. It's persisting. It looks like it's not going. Still have the faith that one day, one day it will expire. The Lord will visit me, but rather let's learn the patience. That is coming in it. Sorry. Sorry, Brian. Okay. Let's learn the patience that comes through it. Let's learn the lessons that the Lord is taking us through that. If you don't have that period of waiting, you may mix out on that great, huge experience the Lord wants you to see and to go through for the next stage. Brethren, let's not be like Job to says, well, Lord, I will not do anything. I know it's now the grave. The grave is not yet there. The vision is yet for an appointed time. First Peter chapter one, 5, verse 10, the Bible says, but the God of all grace, who had called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, make you perfect establish, strengthen, and settle you. The Lord will always settle us. Simeon was settled. He waited for so many years. Brethren, we know all the heroes in the scriptures, they waited, they had patience, they stood with the Lord. I pray that the, we all we wait. As the Lord said to the disciples, wait for the promise to come. Those that waited, God were blessed. We are, we are blessed on the day of Pentecost. They were baptized. Those who didn't, who didn't wait ran off with limited knowledge and were operating and their, their, their ministry were limited. May the Lord help us to wait in the name of Jesus. Like, just all, like David, like Simeon, like Anna, may we wait upon the Lord. Remember what the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 30, they shall renew their strength. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Lamentations 3.25, the Bible says there, the Lord is good to them that wait. Brethren, let's wait. The Bible said of Simeon, he waited on the Lord. Habakkuk 2, 3. We've read it. The vision is to an appointed time. Romans chapter 8, verse 25. But if we have, if we in hope, if we, but if we hope for that, we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. Amen.
You're waiting for good grace. Wait for it. Hope for it. Keep it alive. It will surely come. Don't go by sight. Don't go by, oh, I didn't write enough. Oh, I don't think it's coming. It's come to the difficult part. Relieve the Lord. Don't say, oh, that job is so difficult to get. Oh, that child is not coming. Oh, that promise is not being, brethren, wait for it. As we know it in the same place. And then in Luke chapter 2, verse 26, it was accomplished. And then he says, he will not see death until it's accomplished. The, and I want to say to someone today, if you wait on the Lord, you will not be disappointed. Your expectation shall not be cut off. You will not see death until that which is promised will surely come. You may see the heat and the cloud is coming like tornado. And you say, no, my hope is finished. I want to prophesy to somebody that, that promise where it is sitting, it can only take the wind of the tornado to root it out and bring it to you. So I want you to see grace in it. I want you to see blessing. It can only take the, that wind that is coming like hurricane to pull that blessing that was stuck in the sea. That there's no way you will get it there. It will take the hurricane to root it out from the waters to land it in the in, to land it on on the land and that is your blessing see the grace of god in everything please brethren is a lesson of all of us in this man that waited will it be accomplished it must be accomplished amen verse 27 the bible says there we know it that the steps of a good man are ordered by the lord in verse 27 of where we read the holy ghost appeared to him and at the time jesus was at the temple he brought him to see the young child and brethren do not worry how it will happen god has led simon has led philip to the tombian eunuch has led elijah to the widow the same lord will lead you he has led the wise men to come and see and worship him he is still the same father he changed not he will lead you don't worry how do i get there he will take you there don't worry how it will happen as long as Simeon was, was concerned. His own bit is to wait. As of how it will happen, it's none of his business. The Lord will make it happen. Hallelujah. I want to tell someone today, don't worry. It may look like, oh, the said is in Australia. Oh, it can't come to me. I'm in the UK. I want to tell you, the Lord who do not count distance because to us is distance from from on top he's looking at the world it's like a tiny thing in his eyes so he's able to move from this dot to this dot that's what the world looks like but to you and i because of the limitations of our sight and our intelligence from here to um, Australia will take us in a day or a one and a half days to get there and some instances two days or weeks but to the Lord remember we are all in his palms and he's able to do this and if he's able to do that he's able to touch me he's able to take something from the far 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 east to me in the west glory be to his own name and if you are able to see it this way that we are all in his palm and he's looking at us you will believe him in all things you will wait in all things you will know he's able to do there is no distance because it's very short actually the whole globe the world is tiny wrapped up in his arms because he created even more galaxies 10 times, 20 times bigger than the earth. So the distance to walk around in the earth to him is like nothing. It's like a twinkling of an eye. But to us it's large. May we see things through the eyes of faith and through him in Yeshua's name. Amen. The second lady there, again, that was so wonderful. There is Hannah in verse 36. Right there, the Bible says that, and there was one Anna, a prophetess, a, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asa. She was of great age and had lived with an husband seven years from her virginity. She and she was a widow of about four score and four years, 84 years. She was a widow. 
which departed not from the temple, but served God with fasting and prayers night and day. And she coming in that instance, gave thanks likewise unto the Lord and spake of him or to all them that looked for redemption in Israel. Brethren, this was another lady written in these few verses. What do we see today? Before somebody's husband died, before somebody's wife died, everybody is running around to look for another one, to get them. Oh, you can't stand without a man. You can't stand without a woman who told you. What of those who didn't marry? Oh, I need a man to fulfill in ministry. Or oh, when people are widows, they go about, you know, from house to house. As the Bible said it in the book of 1 Corinthians, it says, it must be a widow indeed. Brethren, mind yourself. May we mind ourselves. Look at this woman. The Bible says from the time she only lived with her husband seven years and that was it. She dedicated herself to prayer. The Bible said she was a prophetess. To be a prophetess in those days, a widow for that matter, in those days when where it was only men. Oh, you have to be of the priestly case. You have to be these. But there was a woman. Brethren, keep yourself. The Lord knows. Don't let anyone intimidate you. Don't let anyone say because you're single, you cannot do what the who told you. The grace of Elohim has appeared to all men. The Bible says, and he gave the gift to all. On the day of Pentecost, he did not separate the men from the women and gave the men and didn't give the women. That you are a woman or a widow or do not have a husband does not limit you, does not make you less. You are who the Lord has made you. There is power in you. There is grace in you. There is authority in you. Recognize it. Use it. Don't let anyone say to you, Oh, you don't have a husband, or when you see those, you know, with husband, when you see husband and wife going together, you say, Oh, how I wish. Look at the life of Anna. Don't wish anything. She accepted the grace of the Lord. Rather, she used the virtue. She was a prophetess. It didn't make her less. The gift of calling is without repentance. So whether you're married or you're not married, you're single, you have children, you're a single parent operating the gift of the Lord. Don't let society put you in one corner and you said, oh, I'm a single parent and what about it? Oh, I'm a widow and what about it? Brethren, don't let, allow those things to put you down. Operate in the gift of the Lord. She lost her husband seven years and she remained in prayers how many of us we dedicate ourselves without looking from one person to the other some people their husband before you know it they've gone into seven four five and all those things brother let's take this out of the church it doesn't look nice it is not decent she stayed she is a woman of Elohim. She knows her body will not be defiled. She has a lot to do with the Lord, to do for the Lord. The life does not consist in the abundance of things which we have here on earth. It's about the glory of the Lord upon my life. And today, are you single? Today, are you a widow? Today, have you been left? Today, are you a single parent? Whether you're a woman or a man, remain in the Lord. Dedicate yourself to the Lord. There is something. She did it quietly, you know, secretly. But today, you and I and all generations are still reading about her. These places are not being picked up to be preached. Is covered up in the church. Nobody wants to talk about righteousness and purity. Nobody wants to talk about this. It's all about, you know, showing. But look, if you take your time, she was a widow of about 40, 84 years, which departed not from the temple. May you not depart from the temple. May you not depart from your calling. May you not depart from the grace. May you not depart because men have laid some kind of standard and the way it should happen or not. But served God with fasting and prayers night and day. May you serve Elohim.
May you remain in holiness. May you celebrate the goodness of the Lord upon your life. She was okay. She served him because she understood. She knew that this world is not our home. We are a passing through. She knows that if only in this life we have hope, we are of all men most miserable. She was so strong not to allow physical circumstances to limit her from operating in the gift and calling of the Lord. She remained. Are you called of the Lord and situations in life seems to limit you? Break out of it. Don't let it cage you. Don't let it profile you. Don't let it make you feel so bad that you're crying night and day, wishing and wishing. But see what the Lord has given to you. To be a prophetess in, that, in those days is a great privilege. Great, great, great privilege. So she honored the promotion the Lord has given to her. And she remained in it and didn't allow the physical things to cage her. And what happened to her? She saw the Lord. She can see, she said, can this be seen in, in on this age and time? This is a challenge to all of us ministers. Can we keep and serve God? If you count it, can we count the Lord enough? Can we consecrate ourselves so much that we will serve him in truth and in holiness, in righteousness, all the days of our life? That is Anna. So today, brethren, may we be encouraged. Remember where we read earlier, the Bible says that all these things are written for us as an example in Romans chapter 15 that we will follow. Let's say, encourage yourself in the Lord, our Father. Are you a single parent? Are you on your own? Are you without a husband? And the Lord has called you into ministry? Walk in it. Be bold. Are you single? You are not married? Look at Hannah. The Lord knows. Nobody can take away that gift of prophecy from you. That gift of teaching from you. That gift of evangelism from you. That gift of to pastor orders or the, the gift of being an apostle. No one. Recognize it. It's not a matter of being a man in the physical or a woman in the physical, but accepting the grace of God and in humility, walk in it. She remained in the post, praying night and day, not to be seen, not to be talked about, not to flat, you know, flaunt it all around, but to remain in her consecration. May the Lord help us. Father, we thank you this morning and we bless you. Thank you for these three examples that the Bible says all these things were written as an examples for us to follow. You have spoken to us this morning. Lord, this is not enough. Help us, Lord, throughout today to go back and open the scriptures and read again the three verses about Joseph, the four about Simeon. And the three about Anna. And Father, we know the Holy Spirit will speak to us more. Speak to us more. And Lord, help us to wait on you. Help us to remain just. Help us, Lord, even in the secret and in open, to consecrate ourselves. For you are a rewarder of them that diligently seek you. You are not unrighteous as not to reward us of our labor of love. So give everyone hope. Give everyone the grace to know that you will surely reward us. Our, our expectation shall not be cut off. We will never leave this earth without accomplishing that which you have kept before the beginning of times for us. Thank you, Father. Give us the grace to hope and to have the faith and to know that with you all things are possible. Help us not to count time and age, but help us to remain in you. Glory be to your name. In Yeshua Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. We thank the Lord. Today is the birthday of our evangelist Thomas of Galway Island. He was a, a master class alumni. Minister um go not go Fanny um, Madungo of Botswana, Prophet Tanya Baker of Texas, Minister Kisha Lewis of IMF USA, and then today is their birthday. And brethren, please rest remember that IMF UK conference is on 12th to 13th here at Old Kent Road, and IMF USA is at Meriden, Connecticut, July 19th to 21. 
Brethren, this that's one weekend back to back. Let's pray. And brethren, anywhere we are, pick up your handbag, put on your sandals. Let's fellowship together. Let's be one. Let no one be left behind. The Bible says, do not forget the assembly of one another as the manner of some. It's about iron sharpening iron. It's about meeting each other. It's about encouraging one another. It's about knowing, brethren, that look, I'm not like Elijah all by myself. There are seven other thousands who are indeed looking for righteousness. Let's come. The hawks are so much. The kisses are so much. The joy, the dancing. Let's come. The remnant. Come to the gathering of the remnant. Brethren, make our time. Don't allow the enemy to you know, suggest no money. Oh, you can stay. You will watch it. It will never be the same if you watch it online. Take your bag. Let's come together. Brethren, let's all come. Today, buy your ticket. Come do cash shares. We can do share cares and you can um, um, cash shares, carry on and you take turns in driving that car, singing and then giving God glory. I thank the Lord the way those in the U.S. come. It's so wonderful. When I watch their, 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 their clips, they were coming together. They have food. They are eating. They are singing. They are dancing. They are chatting. It's all one another. It's the fellowship. Brethren, we can't get this in the world. There's no other place. So once in a year, it's not even enough. Don't let that bypass you. Take your bag. Say, Lord, I'm going. When I get there, I'm going to the gathering of the saints. It cannot be the same. May the Lord help us to come together for these two powerful weekends. In Yeshua's name, amen.